government censorship orchestrated through universities like Stanford and elsewhere created this flow chart to censor Americans on some of the most important issues that we discussed here on this channel and elsewhere. But this came over from Michael Schellenberger. This, a lot of the infrastructure is still operational. We've covered cases here where the Supreme Court has said that they are going to be debating this for some time and then we'll have a resolution about whether the government can outsource their censorship to third parties, whether universities can literally gobble up your communications, our communications in this little section right here and then process it and then make sure it is queued for deletion and removal. We'll go through the flow chart, but this comes over from the great Michael Schellenberger on X says that government funded Stanford researchers, they told us that they didn't demand censorship, uh, but they did. They even created this little handy graphic with a, in a grant proposal. Give us money so we can do this. It shows how their disinformation incidents are routed to their platform partners for takedowns. And so you may have had your conversations gobbled up in this little flow chart. Let's take a look at how it worked. The exhibit is the internal workflow of the core virality project partners, right? These are all the people who want to censor us. Center for an informed public from University of Washington. CSM, whatever that is. Stanford Internet Observatory. And First Draft. Now here's how it works. You exist thinking that you are an American citizen who has free speech in this country, who can dialogue about elections, about public policy, about things being mandated to be putting inside your body, about what our country is doing to your livelihood and your well-being, what they're doing to your friends, your family, all of the things you're having a conversation about, maybe about January 6th or maybe about the election. And you post something on YouTube, like a video. You post something on Facebook, like a comment. You leave a mark on X or create something on Google. And guess what happens? All of these people have these different buckets. Dedicated teams are continuously sourcing potential disinformation incidents across online communities, okay? Groups of internet sensors are just sitting there monitoring everything you're doing. What are they looking for? Oh, foreign influence, anti-jab wellness category, anti-jab extremist category, an alternative media category, and target communities. I don't even know what the heck that is. But what they do is they sit there scrolling around, monitoring everything, then they get notified about it. They send emails, apparently. Analysts then staff a daily on-call shift, okay? So they're all just gobbling this up, sending it to their bosses, funneling it into their on-call team. This is dangerous. This is misinfo. This person is saying that we should question this. Whatever. Okay, all these goobers there are then sitting there, this is dangerous and we can't let this person have this opinion. So they've got in-health, in-house health sector experts that may provide context on difficult cases. Uh, maybe that person has an opinion that we should allow or something. Then the health sector partners, they may collaborate on specific incidents to provide further context. So in other words, what this means, a difficult case is probably a high profile case. Somebody that has a lot of reach, somebody that's powerful in terms of their audience and who they can communicate with. So what do they do? They have to build a plan. What can we do about this, right? They have to really like bring in the heavy guns. If it's somebody small, they just send it over and they dunk it, get rid of it. So these sensors, they then aggregate all of this in, co in cahoots with external sources, which are probably all, you know, who paid by who knows who. And then incidents are consolidated into quote, key narratives. They're analyzed and they're sent to a manager with a recommendation for external communication. So they gobble all this stuff up. A manager or whomever then takes it. They provide two things, a weekly summary, which goes over to the government, our health sector partners, including the CDC. So they deliver a weekly summary of all incidents that are sent to the health sector partners. And then per incident communications will also be leveraged for urgent matters, right? Per incident for urgent matters. Somebody says something that is offensive. Then they also send it to their platform partners, right? Per incident. Incidents are routed to Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, X, formerly Twitter, Google, and TikTok. And then the platform partners, their little embedded, and many of these people have like ex-FBI, okay? Ex-CIA, ex-deep state apparatus, three-letter agencies are all working there. Facebook just pulls them right over. It's a retirement plan. So then they're routed to their platform partners, whoever is over there. In this case, it was guys like Elvis Chan at the FBI routing things. Actually, Elvis Chan is not even on this one, right? FBI is not on this list, but the same format was exactly what they were doing to cover up the Hunter Biden laptop story and all the things. So then health sector partners may also submit their own tips, which will then be routed for analysis with the same process, but higher priority. So if you have some pharmaceutical bureaucrat who says that somebody is saying something that is offensive to their bottom line, ultimately, that they can do something about it. So this is happening all day, every day, okay? Your free speech being gobbled up by little maniacs who think that they can control your free speech in this country, and then they just funnel it through. It's like money laundering, okay? It's like information censoring laundering. The government didn't do it. All these other people did, and they're just referencing it right back to the government and to other platform partners. It's disgusting. So this came out from Michael Schellenberger. He has
adds some more meat to the bones. He says, look, last March, after Taibbi testified in front of Congress, which we covered here, the Stanford Internet Observatory, they said, quote, we did not censor or ask social media to remove any content about the jab. That was a bald-faced lie. Now, we also learned that the Stanford Internet Observatory demanded censorship last month. Last month. It's not an old thing. Thanks to his FOIA request that Stanford Internet Observatory had put its creepy little censorship flowchart in its own grant proposal. They say in the name of fighting disinformation, they are spreading disinfo about themselves. Now, there are so these are some of the virality projects most egregious and absurd and anti-censorship efforts. Here's what they did. They went after Krispy Kreme? After Krispy Kreme announced that they would give free donuts to people who would go take that thing, the Virality Project alerted platforms about criticism against Krispy Kreme donuts. So Krispy Kreme was trying to bribe people to go get the thing. And then when people said, uh, you're going to go get a, you're going to go do that for a donut. You're going to go get a glazed donut in exchange for that. And they said, how dare you criticize Krispy Kreme's donuts? Have you ever had those things? They're delicious, man. They're like crack, you know, maybe, maybe some people would. And they were censoring the people who were condemning Krispy Kreme. The Virality Project also flagged a PDF that had data about some actual numbers from the government. Now, the project noted that Google had removed the content after its report. So we had some bad data, PDF data, consolidated data that they was floating around and they were trying to get rid of it. The project flagged an Israeli preprint that talked about alternatives and they got rid of that one. The Virality Project also flagged Lancet and a research article and, and Facebook labeled it. In another highly troubling incident, the project flagged someone's Google Drive, all right? They said, quote, see the following Google Drive. This Google Drive is sharing links that's using tech testimonies about misinformation problems. On multiple occasions, they sent platforms results about about resistance to mandates and lockdowns, talking about the worldwide rally for freedom, called it organized outrage, they called the project. Now, contrary to Stanford's claim that the project did not ask social media companies to remove things, they did. When different people made various claims, and I'm being careful because of the medical, we've been we've been targeted for this. We've been medically misinformation censored twice on the tubes, probably because of these people. Now, be sure to read the excellent new expose, they say, and watch this video. And so this graphic shows that a committee of experts are deciding what people are being allowed to say. First Amendment says the government should not be doing this. Obviously, it's despicable. And this is what leads to the problems, right? If we were able to have free and open discourse, we would get to actual problems solved. We would have them solved because by shifting the conversation, you are limiting good information and feedback from being introduced. And they do it because it serves their companies. It serves their government bureaucracies. It serves their bank accounts. And it disserves everyone else. We have to deal with the consequences because we're not able to engage in actual dialogue. There were serious consequences to this and they're still doing it. So we'll be here continuing to cover this, my friends. Thank you for subscribing wherever it is you're watching this and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.